Good afternoon, everybody. I trust we have been keeping well. But even before I share, I would just like to share with you a song. Today, as we know, we are going to talk about Holy Spirit. And you know, when we do our being with Jesus, the Holy Spirit occupies the most. We are doing a total of five weeks of Bible reading on the Holy Spirit. And I think the whole issue that the Holy Spirit is a subject that somehow causes the most controversy and also causes a lot of somehow in division among God's people. I mean, over the, this is the second week from our discussion these two weeks, there are questions that people on one of us brought up. Uh, what about speaking in tongues? Then somebody asked, can I lose the Holy Spirit? And somebody also asked, uh, how emphasis, what is the emphasis? You know, and I think it depends on which church tradition we come from. Okay, different practices, different traditions. And so different people of God have different uh, perception of the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, in the church office, there are some like, people call us up and ask about church. And if the other staff cannot answer, they will pass the phone to me. Okay, let Pastor Kok my talk to you. And then a lot of time, people will ask me, uh, your church, huh? what sort of church is it? Huh? Are you very noisy, noisy, pray loud, loud type? Or are you all like that, like that, like that? I think people call SSMC and want to find out what sort of church we are. Okay, maybe if we look, take one step back. If you look at the work of the Holy Spirit in our own personal life. I think all of us started our spiritual journey as a non-believing person. Even though if we come from a Christian family, but still somehow we may not have the personal relationship with Jesus. So we all start off as a non-believer. Then later, we become a pre-believer or a seeker. That's when somebody share Christ with us, gospel with us, or we read some books and we start to become interested, started maybe attending church. Uh, some of us may go to an evangelistic rally and hear the word of God. And then, then we know that the conviction of sin of the Holy Spirit came in because we talk about a person only can come to the Lord 
when there's conviction of sin and the work of the Holy Spirit. And when there's a conviction of sin, we repented of our sin and we accepted Jesus into our heart. And then we call, either we say, rebirth, I mean, born, we are born again, or we are being justified like John 3, 16. Okay, when Nicodemus said, how can a person go back to the mother's womb? Okay, then there's the rebirth. I think all of us agree on that. But what happens after that will depend quite a lot on what tradition we come from, church tradition. I recall, my, I don't come from a, China, a, a Christian family. My parents only came to know the Lord when my mom came down with cancer. So the church that I went to was a Chinese Methodist church, very conservative. And I have a, a Bible woman that I love dearly. Okay. And she would tell, at that stage, that was in the 70s. And she would make a statement like that, speaking in tongue is of the devil. I don't know whether some of you heard that. And I still remember when we were in MYF, uh, each year concert, we have a Christmas, we have a concert, and then we will sing so, uh, Amen, praise the Lord, Amen. And they say, Boy side, boy side, boy side, boy side, clap hands. Uh. That is a church tradition I came in. Okay, then, but then the, the, so generally we will say that in terms of church tradition, depending on where we come, we can say three, broadly three categories of church tradition. One is the evangelicals, okay? Then another one on the, another extreme uh, is the Pentecostal. And so in between is the charismatic. So today I will take a little bit time to, to just share a little briefly so we get a big picture, okay? Who is considered evangelical? Generally, some distinctiveness of evangelical churches or evangelicalism, it is we, there, there's a centrality of Jesus Christ. So we believe that it's through faith and grace in Jesus that we can receive salvation. Secondly, it is the authority of the Bible. Okay, like, I think when I shared in, uh, shared in prayer, Tuesday prayer meeting on the journey of SSMC, we came at that time, the church that we came out from, at, at that season, that season in time is very liberal theology. So they do not focus so much of the authority of Bible. And that's where we, one part of the reason why some of the uh, founding members came up because we wanted to establish authority. Okay. Thirdly, we'll talk about there must be a born again conversion experience. Okay. And the fourthly, evangelical churches will talk about the whole area evangelism, whole area sharing Christ with others, the whole area we have to lift up our Christian life so that you can share Christ with others. So there's on one end the evangelicals that a lot of the mainline churches were. Then on the other end, it is the Pentecostalism. And the Pentecostalism, Pentecostal churches started about the early 20th century, about 1900 or so. Okay, And what are the distinctiveness of the Pentecostal churches? Like some of us will say that uh, uh, pray in tongue and so on. Okay, yeah. The Pentecostal churches also maintain that Jesus Christ is a focus on Jesus Christ, centrality of Jesus Christ. He also emphasizes on the authority of the Bible. But what is different is that emphasizes a lot of experience. Okay, experience is very emphasized. And another thing that I emphasize is emphasize very much on the second baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they call it, they use the term baptism of the Holy Spirit as opposed to when we receive Jesus. Okay, we have talked about when we receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit came into us and we have the Holy Spirit in us. But the Pentecostal said, 
oh, that is not enough. You must come to a point in your Christian walk that you are now having a second experience and you have a baptism of the Holy Spirit. The other thing we have a baptism of the Holy Spirit, the first and foremost sign or evidence of a baptism of the Holy Spirit, you must speak in tongue. So there is the evidence. And it is only in the, some of the ultra Pentecostal churches, it is only when you have experienced the second baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can speak in tongue, then only your salvation is considered full. The rest of the people who somehow are not having experienced that, sad to say it could be considered branded as a second class Christian. So you have on the one end, one spectrum, evangelist girls, on the one spectrum, which is a, a Pentecostal that started about early 20th century. Okay, and then about in the year about uh, 1960 and so on, among the mainline churches, among the evangelicals, they, they start experiencing and exercising the charismatic renewal. That's where the charismatic movement started. So the evangelical churches, they started when they experienced, they started adopting some of the practices that is similar to the Pentecostal movement. So there is a more stress, uh, more exposure to the gift of the Holy Spirit. But what is the difference between charismatic churches and Pentecostal churches? Okay, the difference is the charismatic churches do not insist that speaking in tongue is the first sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, they encourage us to use the exercise and, and all the gift of the Holy Spirit because we believe the gift of the Holy Spirit is given to the church for the edification of the body of Christ and we are encouraged to use it. Okay, And of course, the other distinctiveness is the charismatic churches movement will insist that the baptism occurs at birth, at the new birth, okay, John 3.16. When we come to receive Jesus, in that justification process, we receive the Holy Spirit and He is with us. Okay, so, so how do we look at Him? Okay, so maybe some of the points I would like to share my own personal experience. Okay, we talk about Justification when we come to Jesus. Then the whole thing of the work of the Holy Spirit is the whole process of sanctification. So we become more and more like Jesus. Okay. And then finally, glorification. Okay. Some of us, depending on our personal experience or depending on our exposure to different experiences, some of us are so fearful of the Holy Spirit manifestation. Okay, sometimes if in church somebody when prayed for falls down, and there are some people, Ayu, what is happening to him? Why is he down? Uh, is he in control of himself or not? What is happening? Some are very fearful. And some people, when in the one case, somebody when the preacher prayed for him, he instantaneously <laughs> stepped back because he's afraid of uh, being slain the spirit. Okay, but some other people welcome the whole charismatic experience. And of course, some people seek after it. Okay, I would like to encourage all of us that we must seek not so much the gift, but we must seek the giver. Which means we don't focus so much, I want to speak in tongue, I want to speak in tongue. I, want, I really want to speak in tongue. And then you, you, you get so focused on that until you leave for other things. But it is more like I seek the working of the Holy Spirit in my life. I think Pastor mentioned two, three days ago, it's not how much of the Holy Spirit I have, but more how much of myself that the Holy Spirit is in control. So, 
depending on our experience, some of us desire, desire to experience the gift of the Holy Spirit. If that is your desire, go ahead and ask the Lord. In Matthew chapter 7, 11, he said, if our human father who is evil know how to give good gifts to us, how much more our good heavenly father will give us the Holy Spirit when we ask him. Okay, so when we, we need to, if any one of us desire in our heart to ha have this, uh, to be able to exercise different gifting, go ahead and ask. But knowing that in later we read about spiritual gift, speaking in tongue is not the one and only spiritual gift. Okay, when we ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit, and grant a spiritual he may not give you gift of tongue or he may not give you gift of prophecy but he might give you gift of service he might give you gift of hospitality okay i think in a few weeks time uh, when we are talking about there are different types of gift okay there are the motivational gift there are ministry gift like prophecy, serving, teaching, exhorting, giving, organizing, mercy, and so on. So when we ask God to give me the gift of the Holy Spirit, He might give me mercy. Like some of us somehow have a very compassionate heart. Okay. Am I, in that sense, experienced the spiritual gift? Yes, even though you may not speak in tongue. Okay, and then so... We have to look at, we are talking about later fruits and gifts. Let us all seek Jesus, seek the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to bear his fruit in our life and also bear his, grant us gift. Every one of us, as we will learn later, every believer has a gift, spiritual gift when we ask God for it. It may be teaching, it may be exaltation, it may be mercy, it may be hospitality. My own personal experience. Okay, I come from Chinese Methodist Church where, where my, my ladies, my Bible woman say, the gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, speaking in tongues is of the devil. Then I went to Met, uh, MU to study. And it's at MU that I have a lot of spiritual grounding. After after graduation, I went to Rock for a short while, one year plus, and then I went to Kuala Lipis. And that's where I met Uncle and Auntie Liu, and Robin was in secondary school when we were there. And that was in Kuala Lipis, that is the time in the 80s, where we were the whole movement of charismatic renewal came in. And I have a desire in my heart to want to experience Holy Spirit in the deeper, more personal way. So I went to read uh, what is speaking in tongue and what is baptism of the Holy Spirit, what is, a, what is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And even as I was seeking, there was one night I have a dream. And in my dream, I dreamt that I received the gift of the Holy Spirit, received the gift of the Holy Spirit, I received the gift of tongue. And in my dream, I was praying in tongue. Okay, about maybe a couple of weeks later, there's this couple, Harrison, Mr. and Mrs. Harrison came to Kuala Lipis and he ministered to us. And Robin was there with me, with us. And at the end of the, towards the end, he said, he asked, any one of you would like to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Receive that. So both, a few of us, not, both Robin and I, and both of us on that day, received a gift of tongue. So Robin and I. And so that was my experience. And through, since that day onwards, am I a better Christian than before? No. Okay, so it's just that I am surrendering myself more to Jesus. Am I allowing myself to be more open to Holy Spirit to work in us? Okay, some of us, like the lady I mentioned, Madam Tay. She may not have a speak a word of tongue, but
but she is one of the most godly and spirit-filled believer that I met, that I really highly respect. So whether I speak in tongue or not, or whether I prophesy or not, is not an indication of my spirituality. I think the indication and the doorpost of my spirituality is how I live my Christian life and how much I allow the Holy Spirit to control me and how much of the fruit of the Spirit that I show in my life. So I hope this little sharing, so that we can understand a little bit better on uh, evangelism, evangelicals, charismatic, and Pentecostalism. And where is SS? As I shared during the prayer, in the, in the 80s, 80, late 80s, early 90s, God has brought charismatic renewal to SS. And thank God that we are one of the churches that never break up because our leaders bound together, stickability of SSMC. And from there on, we move on. So if people ask, I say, when people are answering the call, I say, well, uh, we are charismatic in our practices. We welcome the work of the Holy Spirit in our church. We encourage our people to exercise gifts, but we do not subscribe to the fact that second, every Christian must go have that so-called baptism of the Holy Spirit. But it's actually, we need to be continually being filled, in feeling the Holy Spirit day by day. Okay, that's my sharing. Thank you so much.